City of San Diego activating its inclement weather shelter program. It's offering, of course, to those who live on the streets a warm place to stay. The Lucky Duck Foundation, they say more needs to be done year round. Joining us now for more is the executive director, Drew Moser. Drew, thanks for joining us in the studio tonight. Thanks for having me. Let's talk about that. I mean, we we see this every time drops below a certain temperature or has a chance of rain. But you're saying this is this is something that the urgency needs to be there at all times. Yeah, it's something that we've advocated for every year is, hey, we know the winter's coming, we know rain's coming, we can't be surprised by this, and we can't wait for this type of weather to create a sense of urgency. Uh, so we're focused on, you know, there's going to be 100 or so inclement weather shelter beds that get activated here because of this weather, which is good, it makes a difference, but the, some facts are the last six months, six months in a row, the downtown count has reached a new record high. So clearly it's moving in the wrong direction. So inclement weather shelter beds are gonna make a difference, but we, we, government needs to have a much bigger, bolder, more aggressive plan uh, to reduce, start the process of reducing homelessness. And that's where we've proposed that at least 500 shelter beds on underutilized city owned property should be quickly activated, good weather or not. Right. Let's provide more immediately available beds. Before we talk about the 500, let's talk about why maybe the city isn't following that advice. When they are seeing these numbers that speak for themselves, why aren't we seeing more of a plan, emergency plan, activated that would keep this going year round? Because clearly we need it. That's the million dollar question. And I think our group is, refuses to operate at the speed of government. And uh, we're focused on taking tangible action now to provide those immediate pathways off the streets. Government has the, you know, the yeah. challenges and the bureaucracies that we try to cut through. It can be painstakingly uh, uh, delayed, but where we just, we, our group really tries to take a fact-based and persistent approach to push through things that we believe are high impact, are gonna bring down the numbers and, and, and start the process of, of alleviating suffering and bringing down the number of people that are suffering on the street. The other part that goes along with that is if, if the city can have a more, and all 18 cities throughout the county have a more deliberate um, and focused approach on public safety and reducing the criminal element. Because mm. that alone, by, um, by taking the, the people that are uh, causing criminal behavior, take those people off the streets, that will immediately start the process of reducing homelessness and protect people who are literally homeless, seniors and youth and others that are out there literally vulnerable. So the most vulnerable populations. And that's something too that the, the you know, leaders talk a lot about and, and being able to target those groups. But as you mentioned, when a lot of the focus has to remain on the criminal activity and the, you know, public safety problems that come along with it, well, that takes out resources that could be focusing on those targeted groups. Let's talk about what you're doing right now, of course, helping along with those plans with inclement weather, but also what you want to see done with the 500 beds. Well, one thing we've done is, is we've distributed thousands, I think this winter alone, over 3,000 winter coats that transform into sleeping bags that are made by formerly homeless parents. Uh, we distribute those all throughout the city and the county. And, and then we recently proposed a, a plan to add 500, at least 500 uh, bridge shelter beds in, uh, at Inspiration Point, Point. It's a city owned property that's highly underutilized. And what we've proposed is adding bridge shelters. And historically, the found, Lucky Duck Foundation has uh, purchased these massive industrial tent structures. They go up within months for literally pennies on the dollar compared to the cost of adding housing. Uh, to help people move off the streets and onto a much brighter and, and more fulfilling pathway in life. And so that's, our co-founders match all donations up to one and a half million dollars per year. So we'll go out and raise those funds and then some, right. call on the public to support us. We, we don't pursue government dollars, we pursue government to do its job. And then we'll fund programs that are meant to have a high and immediate impact, like sleeping bag coats, like right. bridge shelters that that you help see. people find a, a brighter pathway in life. Exactly. Well, Drew, you and the team doing great job. We know that y'all are kind of leading the way right now. And as you said, intentionality behind this problem. We, of course, are encouraging our viewers to support the Lucky Duck Foundation however they can. And uh, certainly hoping to see the city uh, maybe realize that, again, winter weather or not, the need is there. Well, and I think it's important to call out, we're not here to be a critic. We're very much here to be a supporter and a catalyst for tangible action uh, by the government. Make we fully support that and we're here to be a constructive collaborator
right. to, to move things forward that, that start the process of reducing homelessness. We appreciate you taking the time tonight. We, of course, will check in with you as uh, we see this problem, sadly, going in the wrong direction, but we're hoping to see that turn around very soon. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Thanks, Drew.